Hello guys, this is Mike from mcprogramming.org. In this tutorial, I wanted to get away from our backend code a little bit and start styling up our site. Just because when I start to actually create a website, I like to give it a little bit of style throughout the whole process. And there's different schools of thought on this, such as just create all of the content first and then style it up. But I'm usually giving these items classes, so I like to define those classes at the same time, just so I, I kind of remember what I'm trying to do. So I want to give it maybe a navigation bar at the top, for instance, in this video. But I also wanted to go over this really cool front-end tool that we can use. So I want to introduce a tool called Laravel Elixir, and this comes packaged with Laravel 5 and Laravel 5.1. What it does is it wraps around Gulp, which is a task automator that anybody who has been messing with the front end to any intermediate to advanced level should probably know about, either Gulp or Grunt. But this is going to wrap Gulp and make it a lot easier, where if you want to compile your SAS file, it may take a couple lines in regular old Gulp, but with Laravel Elixir, it just is one line right here, mix.sass, and you specify the file that you want to compile. It also compiles CoffeeScript into JavaScript. And let's go back real quick to Sublime Text before I get a little bit deeper into Laravel Elixir. I want to explain some of the file structure. So inside of our resources folder, we have the views that we've been messing with, but we also have this assets folder. Inside of assets comes packaged a SAS folder that comes with a basic app.scss file. And notice that right here, which is commented out, we have an import statement that imports our bootstrap SAS. So it comes packaged with bootstrap. So that's pretty cool. And what happens is we can build up our app.scss or app.sass. So inside of here, we can create more SCSS files or SAS files if you want. And we can also, inside of our assets folder, create a JS folder. And that is what Gulp is mostly looking for is anything inside of this assets folder unless you specify specifically another directory to look in. But if you compile stuff using this Gulp file with Laravel Elixir, it's going to automatically pull the files from resources assets and it's going to place the resulting file inside of our public folder. So if I ran this command right now, other than me not having Bootstrap SAS at the moment because I haven't installed our NPM into our project yet, it would place a CSS folder right here and it will give us an all.css file. So let's go back to our Laravel Elixir documentation and look at what else it can do. All right, so we can compile SAS. Right here, we specify a couple SCSS files that we want, and we give it the directory we want to put it in. Down here, we can also combine style sheets into one style sheet with mix.styles, and we can also specify where to put that at. We can mix CoffeeScript, which I don't use at all, but you can also use ES6, which is ECMAScript 6, which is the standard for JavaScript. And if you know anything about ECMAScript 6, which is the new JavaScript that's come out, a lot of the new features aren't going to be supported in a lot of browsers, so this makes it to where it'll compile it down to ECMAScript 5, which is supported by most browsers. And you can go through here and you can read all the documentation to what all Laravel Elixir can do. I'm not going to really get into everything it can do, but there is a lot of amazing things. So right now, I want to go back to my blog website, and I just want to put a simple header. So I quickly, in CodePen, just wrote out this code to make this really simple header in Bootstrap. So let's take this code right here that I created, and I'm going to make a view partial in our Sublime project. So let's go into Resources, Views, and I'm going to create a new folder, and I'm going to call this Partials. And inside Partials, I'm going to say nav.blade.php. Cool, and I'm just going to throw that in there. Let's line it up properly. Alright, cool. Save that. And what I want to do now is I want to add this to all of the pages. And I can either do that 
individually inside of index.blade.php and show.blade.php, but I don't want to have to redo it over and over again. So let's just go put that in our main layout file, which is called our master layout file. And we'll put this over top of the container for right now. And the code to do this is include, and we'll say partials.nav. Right, save that and let's go back to Google Chrome refresh cool it's working I do need to add a little bit of margin so everything is viewable so let's go do that real quick I'm going to go and add that to our assets and our app.scss file right now I'm not too worried about making a bunch of scss files I'm just going to add the code right here so what I need to do first actually is go and install Laravel Elixir so I can compile this down. So what we need to do is let's go back to Chrome and the first thing we need to do, let's go back up to our documentation. It has the installation instructions. We need to install Node and you can check if you have Node by running Node-V. So let's do that real quick. Node-V and I have version 0.12.7. So cool, we have that. And now that we have that, we need to run npm install global gulp, which means we're going to install gulp globally to our computer. I already have that, but if you run this command right here, you might come into some problems, and what you might need to do is put sudo in front of that, which is sudo, and it's going to ask for your password. All right, so that'll give you administrative rights to be able to write that. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just say npm install so we can get Laravel Elixir, and it's going to give us a package.json file, which is very similar to our composer.json file. So package.json file is everything we need in our JavaScript world, where composer.json is everything we need for our PHP world. So these are our dependency files. All right, so let's go back and install npm to our file. Go to your command line and write npm install. This might take a minute, I'm gonna pause it. Cool, that took about 30 seconds to install. So I wanna go back to our project and we're gonna notice a couple differences. All right, notice we have this new folder called node modules and inside of here it came with everything that we specified inside of our package.json which we have dev dependencies for gulp and we have dependencies for Laravel Elixir and Bootstrap SAS. So we have all of these folders right here. And one thing you're going to want to do, it might have automatically done it, is inside of your git ignore file Yep, it automatically did it. We want to ignore node modules and our vendor folder because we don't want to push these to Git. For one thing, they're huge files and it's going to take up a lot of space. And for two, it's, it's unnecessary. We don't need them in there. So let's go back to resources. And we have our app.scss. And I want to make a new class that gives us margin. So let's just call it margin top. Margin top. And let's just say margin top I'll give it I'll say 80 pixels for right now save that and we need to go to our master page and inside of here let's just add this class margin top so now that we've added this let's make sure we can compile this real quick so we need to get our gulp file open cool and we want to just run this basic command so once we run this it's going to automatically make an app.css file inside of public slash CSS folder. So let's compile this. And the way we do that is we need to go to the command line and all we do is write gulp. Hit enter and it compiled successfully and it will throw out this little notice right here. We can also say gulp watch. So every time I run this, it's going to recompile this file and overwrite this file. So let's go back and see if it did that. Let's go into public. We have our CSS folder and we have our app.css. And it has a lot of code because this is all the bootstrap code that came with it. Well, now let's go back to our master page because we need to actually add this file in. So now what we can do is we can get rid of this link to our bootstrap CDN. And let's actually just link in that new file we created. 
So inside of href, what I want to do is we don't have to write public, but let's put in CSS app.css. Cool. So let's go and actually look up in the browser if this made any difference. And it did. We got it pushed down a little bit. So that is the basic introduction to Laravel Elixir. I'm not going to get into what Laravel Elixir can do anymore in this series, but you should take a look at what all it can do. It can really save your front end development some time and some headaches. So it's a great tool and I'll start actually styling stuff up kind of as I go but I really want to focus mostly on the back end Laravel stuff.